Welcome to worship. Welcome to those who are watching online or however you're doing it, broadcasting. We're glad that you're here. Uh, as you see in your bulletin, Gary and Lisa are here. Old habits die hard, and as co-pastors, when one was preaching, the other of us would be liturgist. So Gary asked if I would come along and help him and be his liturgist today. You're only paying the preacher. Don't worry about that. You don't have to pay double. Um, there are a few announcements I'd like to call to your attention. There are some meetings this week. The deacons tomorrow evening. The session reports are due Tuesday. The table small group is on Thursday. And the session meeting is a week from tomorrow, so I hope you've got your calendars marked for that. Boskov's Friends Helping Friends Day is back. That's on October 19th. Check out the details for that in your bulletin. And if you have announcements, please make sure that you get them in by Wednesday so that the, they can go into the bulletin. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Yes. Okay. Good morning. I will start with true confessions. So I was to change the closing song. I didn't. I was to send it to Kyle and then send it to Jan didn't do it, but we're going to sing it anyway, ha ha. It's number 586 in the red book, so instead of revive us again, we're going to do God be with you till we meet again, and we'll be doing that through Advent. That's our closing song. Okay, now, that was the true confession. Secondly, just the first verse, just the first verse. yes, just the first verse, thank you. Um, next, I received word from the Presbytery that the Plum Creek Church is collecting emergency cleanup buckets. So if you've wondered what you could do for the hurricane effort, there are cleanup buckets and hygiene kits that they will be collecting through, I thought it was the 9th, but I know it's on here, October 9th. They will be collecting those at the Plum Creek Church. So if you are so inclined, I will make the delivery to Plum Creek I have the list of what goes in the buckets and what goes in the hygiene kits. You can take a picture on your phone or you can find it under Church World Service website. Uh, my National Honor Society last year, we did a bunch of hygiene kits. Those are relatively inexpensive to do. The buckets, probably more needed at this time, are more pricey. If a couple people wanted to go together, they, they run about $75. Again, you get them all filled up. So you have to have a five gallon bucket with a lid, and then you fill it with the stuff. So I will put these back there if, if you want to take a picture, or like I said, it's on the Church World Service website. I just clicked there and got these and printed them off. Um, so if you're interested, I will take those before October 9th if you bring them and put them in the church. Also, I received an online message. Um, our little food box out here on the pavilion. We need a vigilant restocker. Um, some of the food is expired. We, I know we have some things downstairs. We have some things up here to put in. Um, the message was, you know, I'm in need of food and there were many things expired. So if that is one of your callings, let me know. I will be glad to set you up with stuff. We can uh, continue bringing things in that were non-perishables that we can put out there. Um, if people are using it, we need to be filling it. And I think that's it. I'm done announcing. Okay, other announcements? All right, we are still planning on the trip to Keystone Safari um, today. So, and we've had a couple um, cancellations, a couple changes. So we definitely have more room for anybody who wants to join us. It doesn't just have to be kids. It can be anybody of any age. Um, I know it's raining right now, but the latest weather is 62 degrees and only 15% of ch chance of rain when we're supposed to be up there. So fingers crossed that it'll be good. Hope to see you there. And um, if you do want to come, just meet us downstairs after church. Um, we're going to have lunch and then head out. Okay, any other announcements? Let's turn our hearts and our minds to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. 
But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait. Gracious God, we thank you for, our pre for your presence with us here today. We thank you for all those who are worshiping around the world on this Worldwide Communion Sunday. We give thanks for the opportunity and the privilege that it's easy for us to just get up and go, where in many places it's much more difficult to be able to come together to worship. So we pray for our brothers and sisters across the world, especially those who have difficulty in coming together for worship, either because of their political situation or war or natural disaster or lack of transportation or illness. We give you great thanks that your Holy Spirit inspires us all, whether we're in the building or watching online at home, wherever we may be, we are your body, united as one in Christ. Amen. <laughs> In the letter of 1 John, we read that if we think we are without sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we are willing to repent, to confess our sins, God is most anxious to forgive us. With that promise in our hearts and minds, let us offer God our confession. Holy and righteous God, amidst the violence and wrongdoing of the world, we struggle to live by faith. We treat suffering with contempt, seek power to serve ourselves, and cowardly shrink from prophetic truth. Gather us again to your table as you gathered the generations before us. Save us from the strife we start and the contention we create. Rekindle within us the gifts you have given. Revive our sense of your Holy Spirit in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The good news of the gospel is that no matter how many times we stumble and fall, Christ reach out, reaches out a helping hand to lift us up. 
If we are truly sorry and confess our sins, the slate is wiped clean as if our sin never existed. All we need do is trust and believe. Thanks be to God for the good news of forgiveness. The peace of Christ be with you. As I said, old habits die hard, and I jumped the gun on the passing of the peace. <laughs> uh, the peace of Christ be with you. I, offer, I invite you to offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Come, stick, come right here. Come right here. Come right here. That's how, where do you normally do that? Right here. Okay. Come on up here. Can I sit here? You want to sit beside me? Okay. So, how far away do you think I come from? Do you know where I live? Where do you live? Do you know where you? Do you know, do you know the road you live on? A farm. You live on a farm. Okay, that's not very far away, is it? No. Yeah. Okay, it's not very far, right? Okay. Well, I live about eight miles away, in in Katani. Okay. That is that far? No, it's not very far. Okay. Well, how far do you think these people live? Do they live very far away? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I have in my pocket here something I brought with me. Do you see what this is? It's just the thing that I got in a church that they gave it to me a long time ago. Not too long, a couple years ago. But it is from an island out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean called the Big Island of Hawaii. And on a Sunday morning, just like this, I went to a church just like your church here. And guess what? They liked Jesus just as much as you do. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, do you love Jesus? Yeah. They love Jesus just as much as you do. And I bet if we look around here and we ask people, they're going to tell you they love Jesus just like you do and just like you do. And just like people all the way in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and some of these people here have been even further than that. They've been to places like England, and places like Europe, and places like Africa, and places like Australia, and maybe to Alaska, and maybe to Florida. And you know why I'm telling you all this? Because today is a very special day. Because Christians, people who love Jesus all around the world, are gathering today to enjoy communion. That's the bread and the blood of Jesus, the body and the blood of Jesus, together. Isn't that exciting? All these people love Jesus together, and they're all doing it today. Okay, let's pray. Okay. Our God, we're so thankful. We're thankful that we can join with other Christians in all places uh, to participate in communion together. We're thankful that we love Jesus and they love Jesus and we all love Jesus together, the Church of Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you. You can go. There you go. Go right that way. like to read for you from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the works of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues." All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. In a second reading from the Gospel of John. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit 
Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word, and I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we don't know what you have in store for us today in this scripture. We just know, God, that it's an exciting time anytime we hear your word. So be with us. Be our light and be our stay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I weighed approximately 115 pounds uh, when I was in, I think, ninth grade. And um, I was taking my rowboat merit badge test in an aluminum boat that weighed a little bit over 200 pounds. I was prepared to row that boat in a straight line for 100 yards, and then I had to back it up 25 yards going in that same line, and then I needed to scull that boat with a single oar off the back end, rescue a swimmer from the water, a deal with wind issues if they arose, and, and to swamp the boat safely, right it, and refloat it. For a small guy, it was hard work. And if you get on a lake where the wind is blowing, it's even harder. And your muscles begin to ache very quickly. This rowing business is what, what I believe a lot of churches and individuals find themselves doing these days. They're working really hard to make a go of it, just like you are here. They're working really hard. If the members 20 or 30 or 40 or 100 years ago could make it work, so can we. If we just work harder, if we just give more, if we have the right pastors and leaders and we figure out what's happening in our community and then we undo those things are, that are creating conflict, if we can do that, we will be the church of 2023 and beyond. But, you know, I believe that the Bible teaches a different way. Listen to Psalm chapter 37, verses 4 through 6. Trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and farm faithfulness. Enjoy the Lord and he will give what your heart asks. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him. He will act and will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justices like high noon. Reverend Joan Gray, a former moderator of the Presbyterian Church USA, uh, wrote a book a, a few years ago entitled The Sailboat Church. Uh, the title grabbed me be, because I grew up sailing on Lake Arthur out at, at Marine State Park. And I used to teach sailing when I was uh, late in college years. The two passages of scripture from, from that reading came to my mind as I read the book on sailing and the spirit. God's efforts and not our efforts. God's efforts and not our efforts. 
from Ephesians 3.21. God, through the power at work with us, can do abundantly far more than we could ever ask or imagine. Listen to that again. God, through the power at work with us, can do abundantly far more than we could ever ask or imagine. In other words, we don't focus on us, on our situation, on our resources. We instead actively seek God's direction. John 15, 5. Did you just heard me read? The last portion of verse 5. Without me, you can do nothing. Nothing. Reverend Gray says, nothing is still a hard word for believers to hear today from Jesus. Without me, he says, you can give religious speeches, but you can't preach the gospel. You can hold church services, but you can't worship. You can pull biblical and theological information. You can put it in front of people, but they won't come to faith. Without me, it's impossible to do ministry or accomplish my mission. Deep down, we feel that is all up to us. Most Christians today would agree, at least in theory, that doing God's work should somehow involve God. But in practice, God tends to be distant. When we're rowing, you see, we're in control. We're in control. In sailing, we know that we can't make that sailboat move like we can with a rowboat. We realize instead that somehow we must reorient, reorient ourselves to catch the wind of the Spirit, that Jesus is our guide and we are powerless to do anything on our own. Without Jesus, without the Spirit, the wind of God blowing in our midst. What difference would it make in our lives if every moment of every day these words were right in front of us? Without me, you can do nothing. We're that, we're Jesus, the Spirit, the Father, is at the front of our thoughts. As the Church of Jesus Christ, we, we chucked uh, we threw out all of these practices we do, the rowing, uh, and we, we are trying to make the church survive and thrive. If all of that's gone, if all of the we stuff is gone, what's left? You know, as good Presbyterians, you know, we have this whole Protestant work ethic, you know, that I was taught when, when I was this high. You know, and, and we, we, all, we all were part of that. We can do it. We're very good rowers. Learning to sail with the Spirit of God is, is not what we are usually accustomed to practicing and living as individuals in a church. I wrote Joan Gray a note a few years ago after I read the book for a second time. And here's what she wrote back to me. She said, Dear Gary, your email made me jump for joy. At this point in my life, seeing churches move into being God-powered is my deepest passion. And I believe small churches have a better chance to do it than larger churches that have the resources to row forever. Because large churches have all the money and they just keep, keep rowing and rowing and rowing. But small churches, they have to let go and they have to let God in a sailboat that is crewed with sailors, each has a job. When the order is given to raise the main sail, some are pulling on the main line and others are making sure that everything is, is feeding into the mast. And still others, they're clamping off lines. Others might be dropping the centerboard and, and the pilot on the tiller. That person is watching and seeing whatever is coming up. They're looking at the waves. They're looking at the clouds. They're looking at the telltales on the sails. They're in partnership with the wind, you have to work together. One of the first classes I taught in sailing at, at this camp that I was working at, um, at one point I turned that flying uh, Scott sailboat over to the command of the seven junior high students I had in my class. You know, at some point, you have to let them go, just like any of you that taught your children to drive. At some point, you have to let them go. 
They were really jazzed to be in charge. As they gave the order to break out the main sail, and they got it three quarters of the way up, and the tiller person that was in the back controlling everything didn't notice that the wind changed directions. And he had the boat facing the wrong way. And the lower boom swung around and hit one of the junior high students right in the side of the head. And when that happened, those on the lines that were hoisting the mainsail were surprised. And they let go of that sail and it came racing down and into the water it went. On a lake, wind can be like that. In life, it can be like that. It swirls sometimes coming from the north one minute and the southwest the next. You got to be working with the wind. You have to know each other intimately. And when you see a change in the color of the water or the caps on the waves look different or the sails on another boat further away are catching the wind differently, you have to be able to react and go with it. The wind blows where it wills. The same with the Spirit of God. And it may not be in the direction that you think you ought to be going. You know, if you want to go to that point over there, you may need to go this way and then that way and then that way and then tack back across that way. You can't always go in that direction. We need to be in an abiding relationship with God. That means we need to know our Lord intimately just like a sailor knows the wind. And the only way we can do that is to practice. Worship isn't some passive activity where we come and sit. It is to be an enthusiastic, passionate engagement with the holy. We are to be spirit-driven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our prayer life is the same way. You know this passage of Scripture. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. Church found in the book of Acts reveals those pray that praying communities weren't passive. They prayed fervently, they pray prayed persistently, and hopefully the leaders and the church, the session, and the worshipers. I used to work maintenance at that, that camp that I was telling you about. That was my, my day job when I wasn't teaching sailing. I remember one time, uh, the job Lisa and I had that first summer, one of the jobs we had was to paint all of the windows on all of those stone, uh, stone buildings kind of a, a blue color. And I was up 40 feet in the air on a ladder with a gallon of blue paint hooked to that ladder and suddenly the wind came up, and it was just a, a single gust, but the lake was behind me. And I looked out on the lake, and starting at the far shore, about three miles away, you could see white caps starting. And I zipped down off of that ladder. I, ha I screamed and had them ring the bell, and that brought all of the junior high students to the boats. And we went out onto the water because the wind was blowing. Now was the time to catch it, drop everything else, and go with the wind. The church needs to have that same urgency when God's spirit starts blowing because that means God is taking us out into the world, not just here. Mission is the point. Telling and sharing Jesus is the point. It isn't about us. It isn't centered on us. It isn't centered on budgets and buildings. It's about witnessing and living Love and joy and peace and kindness and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, all of those fruits of the Spirit, that requires an intimacy with God. On this Worldwide Communion Sunday, the church can't be in isolation. The church can't remain as it's always been because the Spirit of God is always challenging us to reread, to reread this living, vibrant Word. Reread it and put it into place in 2023 and 24. 
and 22. And listen to what God is telling you anew. It means that, that what's happening as the hurricane roars across that peninsula in Florida and leaves devastation in its winds, the church of Jesus Christ must respond. It means as injustice rains down in Ukraine, the church needs to respond. Lisa and I were in a walk uh, in, in Katanning on Wednesday or Tuesday of this week. A shine Walk, sponsored by Kay's Cottage, connected with Haven, which puts a spotlight on survivors of childhood sexual abuse. The church needs to respond. There is the wind of the Spirit waiting for the, for the church to notice and catch it. Lives are being turned upside down. That's where the church needs to be found. Callensville Union Church, when have you seen your church when have you seen that, that spirit blowing? And I know you have memories of that because I've, I've talked with your pastors over the years. You have memories of when that spirit's blowing. You have me, you, you've seen that happening in the past week. Where's that happening today? Where's that going to be happening tomorrow? And how can, how can we get our, our hearts and our minds around visioning that out? Jesus said that if we follow his ways, he'll provide an advocate. We can't do Jesus without the Spirit. That's why I wore my Pentecost stole today. We can't do Jesus without the Spirit. The advocate, the Spirit stands with us and provides the peace we so desperately need, the very power of God. We can't be saved by ourselves, can we? Can't do it. A lot of people try. Jesus did it for us. He, his life for our sins. The Holy Spirit is the power of God to do for us when we can't do it for ourselves. In Acts chapter 1 and 2, the Spirit is described this way. The Holy Spirit is going to baptize you with overwhelming presence. The Holy Spirit is powerful. The Holy Spirit is filling and astonishing and bewildering and amazing. The Holy Spirit is from God. The Holy Spirit is abundantly given if we're willing to receive. It's a gift and it's generous. And it's received in fellowship with one another. You got to be in fellowship. In fellowship, the Spirit wants us to be in prayer for each other and the world. You know, I'm a wind lover. And I won't, I'm just a wind lover. I love to get on a sailboat and put the boat up on edge, and I love to race across the waves. Uh, I love the wind in my face riding down the road on my, my scooter. Uh, how many prefer the windows open in their car to the air conditioning? Several of you. But I get it, ladies, because, you know, I've had Lisa in the car, and she spent, you know, a while getting her hair ready, and you open those windows, and guess what happens? I, I understand that. But you know what I love even more? It's the reason we gather here. I love Jesus Christ. And guess what? When we follow the Spirit's leading, when we take the time to listen privately or as a church, God is amazing every time. Can we commit together on this Worldwide Communion Sunday to let faith invade our daily routines? That's what the psalmist said in chapter 37, to believe that the Spirit of God sustains through the Word of God that we're about to eat and drink with the whole universal church of Jesus Christ. Listen to deeply to Jesus' words. Without me, you can do nothing. For God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good.
people will come from east and west and north and south to feast at the table of the Lord. The table is open to everyone. It doesn't matter if you have all the faith in the world or faith the size of a grain of mustard. That's enough. The invitation is for all and everyone. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join in our communion hymn number 517. be seated. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of seeds and soil, your feast begins long before a morsel of food touches our lips. You begin with dirt and dust, with water and sun ingredients that you supplied from the very beginning, knowing we would be hungry, understanding that we would be thirsty. You nourish us and provide for us before breathing life into us. You, O oh great creator, started providing your gifts for us from the very beginning, and we give you thanks. God of grain and grapes, you continued preparing for the feast by sending your son, Jesus Christ, you sent him to feed us by his words and deeds. Through his death and resurrection, he became the bread of life and the wine of compassion. Christ is the one who gathers us in, who calls each of us by name, who sets a place for us. We give you thanks. God of wheat and wine, long after your son first gathered his friends around a table in an upper room, your Holy Spirit has continued meeting us at tables handcrafted tables painted with intricate designs, and weathered park benches, tables that are covered with homemade casseroles, and tables with quickly opened fast food bags being passed around, tables that are surrounded by friends and families, and tables where only one seat is filled. No matter what each table looks like, the food that is served or the people gathered around it, your spirit meets us still. We give you thanks. God of second helpings, you promise abundance. 
Like a mother who heaps another spoonful onto our already full plates, you give more than we need. Yet despite your generosity, there are those whose bellies are still empty and those whose thirst is never quenched. As we celebrate your joyful feast today with our siblings in Christ around the world, we are aware that no amount of singing can hide the sound of grumbling stomachs and parched throats. Help us to trust in your promises. As we eat this bread and drink this cup, may we trust that there is enough to go around. Keep us from hoarding what you have provided so that all of your children might taste and see, drink and be satisfied. God of tables and chairs, we pray for all eating spaces around the world today where believers are gathering despite risk and suffering. We pray for chairs that are empty where loved ones used to sit, for tables in places of conflict where bullets fly and bombs rain down, for spaces that have been ravaged by hurricanes, floods, and fires. We also pray for eating spaces that are emotionally unsafe this day, tables where tensions are high and certain topics are off limits, placemats that are not set for someone because of the way they look, who they voted for, or who they love. For all these spaces, tables, and chairs where your children gather, Lord, we pray for your peace. God of the joyful feast today in the north and the south, in the east and the west, we are grateful as we meet you around tables full of gifts you have given us. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us so that when the meal is over and we leave this table, we might be a part of extending every table around the world. Help every meal we share look more and more like your heavenly feast. Everyone welcomed, everyone fed, everyone nourished. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord we pray, amen. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and as he poured it forth, he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Come, Lord Jesus, quickly come. Come, for all is ready.
Let us pray. Holy Lord, we thank you for this meal that we have shared with our brothers and sisters around the world. Bless us as we seek to follow wherever the wind will tend to send us. Wherever you call, we will go. For we know that you are with us always to the end of the age. Amen. We come now to the joys and the concerns of the church. Are there any that you would like to lift up? And I would ask as you lift those up, after you say that, that we say together as the people of God, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Our son, Bren, has been having a lot of back problems lately. Okay. Lord, hear our prayer. My office manager's son, stepson, um, passed away in a head-on car accident just a few days ago. And his wife is, um, last I heard, still in a medically induced coma. Lord, hear our prayer. Prayer for Anita Lynch uh, has a large kidney stone, and uh, they are. She is also has an infection, and also being treated for leukemia. So she's had some real problems. Lord, hear our prayer. While Mel is making his way over there, I have a joy to share with you. It's Lisa's birthday today. Okay. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Um, prayers for Tom. Um, he has been suffering with a lot of pain, his legs, knees, and feet for the past few days, my husband. Okay. So he needs lots of prayers. Right. Don't know what's Lord, going on. Lord, hear our prayers. A lot of you know her. My niece, Deanna, and her husband were in the hurricane. They live in Florida. They didn't have blood insurance. They're in bad shape right now. They don't know which way to turn or what to do next. Lord, hear our prayer. I have a lot of them. Jack Augustine is having a, a valve replacement on Tuesday, and Lois is having a procedure tomorrow. And Patty, I was talking to her, Patty, Pat Bolts, and she is doing, she still has a long way to go, but she's being stronger. And then Jan Cannon, she said, what a relief to have the pain go away. And then Betty Bolts is starting chemo, and um, Charlotte uh, came through her surgery very well. And then I also wanted to thank you two for serving us today. It's been very nice. Lord, hear our prayer. We celebrate our my great nephew Jace's birthday tomorrow. He'll be nine. All right. Lord, hear our prayer. Continued prayers for Cindy Swank, who's going through this bone marrow transplant and with really heavy doses of chemo, repeated heavy doses of chemotherapy. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our God, we're thankful for all of these folk that have come forward to offer prayers, to offer concerns, to offer joys. We're gathered as the people of God, Lord, your communion, your community together. And so all of these faces, all of these names that, that have been lifted up, we see them. We see them along with the names of all those that are printed in the bulletin for the Lois, for Lois and Lori and Neva and Abby and Jan and Steve and Charlotte and Reverend Diane and Pat and Aiden and Jerry and Mary Ann. We see all of those faces, Lord. We know them intimately. And we would ask, Lord, that you would just hold them all up in, in healing and in presence. We also, Lord, remember, uh, we, we have had times, like the scripture says, when, when we feel like nothing, 
And we know, Lord, it's sometimes uh, those that are our homebound uh, friends or shut-ins, they feel like nothing because they, they just don't seem connected at all. And so we're thankful, Lord, when, when the church here, the Union Church, can reach out to them. And so we lift up to you Bud and Marvine today, and Barney and Carol and, and Martha Jean, and Floyd and Florence, and Bill and Connie, and Bruce and Candy, and Lois and Vivian, Marie, Russ and Gary, and Phyllis. All of those names, Lord, all of those people are part of your community of faith, and we hold them up. On this Worldwide Communion Sunday, God, we also uh, are thinking of our world, and particularly those in the southeastern part of our own country, Lord, where devastation is hit. We've heard some of that this morning already, and we would ask, Lord, that you would be uh, with all of those first responders that are going there, all of those folk that work with all of those organizations that go in and, and provide help. We would ask, Lord, that, that you would give a, a, a sense of bounty uh, to Christians from across this country and world that, that dig into their pockets to, to help out in whatever way they can, uh, through whatever means they can. We're thankful for those from this congregation and for other places that will be making uh, recovery buckets, disaster response buckets. We would ask also, Lord, that you just might uh, well up inside of each of us and just give us that sense of generosity as we respond not only to, to this world situation, but, but just a couple hundred miles across the ocean in Puerto Rico, part of our country, where another hurricane hit not too long ago as well. We're thinking of other parts of the world where much devastation has happened, whether it's war, whether it's famine, whether it's whatever upheavals are going on, Lord. We'd ask that your spirit might reign. We remember, Lord, those that are serving in our military. Give them the courage they need to do the things that they need to do. We also, Lord, lift up those that are in the mission field because they're out there on their own. Uh, at least they stand there on their own. Lord, we know you're with them and we know they have support back here, but be with them as they're strong for the Lord. And finally on this day, God, we would just ask that you would draw very near uh, to this congregation, hold them up on their mission forward, strengthen them for the task ahead and help them always, Lord, to lean on your son and to rest in the Holy Spirit through the power of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Just want to encourage you in your offering. The plates are at the back door. Those of you that are at home watching this later, you can write your checks, send your dollars, whether it's here, whether it's other places, uh, to love and to continue to serve the Lord. join me in our prayer of dedication. Jesus Christ, our Savior, you grant us a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Make our power serve you. Make our love show you. Make our acts of giving and self-discipline serve you. Author and inspirer of all generosity. Amen.
Before I pronounce the benediction, I want to remind you the first announcement we had at the beginning of the service, or hymn at the end, is hymn number 586, God be with us till we meet again. The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May God be gracious to you and may the Lord's countenance fall upon all those whom you love and all those whom nobody loves and give peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.